Welcome back, everybody. My first guest tonight is the chief medical correspondent for CBS News. Please welcome Dr. Jonathan LaPook. Doctor, thanks so much for being here. Great to be here, Stephen. Well, people say that we're at war with this virus. They're using that metaphor a lot. Yeah. But when you go into a war, certainly you have a goal of what victory is. You have an exit strategy. What's our exit strategy for this virus? Yeah. Well, ultimately, the exit strategy is that this vaccine is widely given. So amazingly, when they came up with a vaccine, when they made the vaccine for uh, SARS, it took 20 months. What they've done subsequently is fewer and fewer months to do it. So Tony Fauci explained this all to me. It took about two months, I think it was 63 days from the moment that they got the sequence of this new virus, the novel coronavirus, until there was a, a vaccine that was to be tested. But it's gonna still take about a year, year and a half for it to be adequately tested. By the way, the way they did that was absolutely amazing. So they had a Zika vaccine that had already been in, invented. So they basically unscrewed the part of it that was specific for Zika and they screwed on a part that would be specific for this new coronavirus. Something like that, not exactly, but it's amazing. Did they that, use CRISPR to do that? <laughs> they did not use CRISPR, but that is a really smart question, Stephen, because people are looking at that for future vaccines. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, that's what I specialize in. Smart, smart questions that aren't applicable. And yet a smart question, uh, nevertheless. Um, I think ultimately we're all gonna be more relaxed when we have a vaccine that we know works. Million dollar question. Why does question. it take a year to a year and a half? If we, if we have something that is um, possibly viable in two, two and a half months, what is going on in the year, year and a half that we're waiting? Testing. So the first phase is to see what, you know, is it, is it safe? Do people get it? Small numbers. And do they have some horrible reaction? Then a, a, wide, a, a larger number of people in a phase two, they may combine it with phase three to see, are there any unexpected side effects? You know, Stephen, medicine is an eternally humbling profession. Seriously, if you have been a doctor for five years and you don't understand that, if you have any hubris left, you are in the wrong profession. We have all had our heads handed to us and look at thalidomide, drugs that had terrible side effects. So we're hoping, we're crossing our fingers that this is gonna be safe and effective, but you don't bet on it. You have to test it and this is no time to throw out science. It's a time to embrace science and make sure that we're doing things the right way, even though there's such a pressure to just say, let's go ahead and try it. Well, when can we embrace each other? When can I run out of the street and hug a stranger? Do you know when you get hugged, your oxytocin, the good, the feel good hormone goes up. And not only does it make you feel good, but I was just reading about it. Um, it actually helps regulate your immune system. So I think, and of course we need our immune system in order to beat this virus because it, it's something that we don't have any, any known treatment for. So not only do hugs uh, increase our oxytocin, make us feel good, but the social, the social, but the socializing, getting together um, makes us less anxious. If we're less anxious, we can get better sleep. If we get better sleep, guess what happens when you sleep? Your immune system is repaired and we need that. Well, speaking of no known treatment for this, uh, some people are pushing the idea of hydroxychloroquine as the answer. That would be great if that's right. Um, other drugs that have been promising have been uh, Kevzara and Remdesivir. Am I Remdesivir. saying that correct? Yeah. Remdesivir. How 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 close are we to knowing if these are viable treatments? All right. So again, this is a moment where you have to embrace science, and you have to be realistic. In the hospital, this is what's going on inside the hospital. You know, in the trenches, which is people are sick as hell, and doctors want to treat them with something, even if it's not proven, even if it's not proven. So when a patient comes into a hospital, uh, into my hospital, NYU Langone, they'll get a cocktail. They'll get um, uh, hydroxychloroquine, Zithromax, they'll get zinc, they'll get steroids, and they'll get anticoagulation, low dose and maybe later high dose. So it's hard to figure out, like, where's the perfect study to know which of those help? So there's that. On the other hand, we have to do the controlled trials. And I think it's going to be very hard to do those trials in the hospital when people are so sick and you just, you just, you want to be scientific, but you have to give them something. And I think the trials that are underway right now, and they are underway right now, are looking not only at the severe disease, but at people who have milder disease and people who are, have been exposed to people who have COVID. So maybe if, if a doctor has COVID uh, and hydroxychloroquine is given or other medicines are given to their relatives or close contacts, maybe that'll have a role. But right now, 
we don't know. And really, Stephen, there's no reason to place a bet on it. You don't have to have a dog in the fight. You, we want them all to work and we have to try them all and hopefully we'll come up with something. Right now, we don't have anything that's proven. Um, now we asked our uh, audience out there uh, who are uh, following us on Twitter, we asked our Twitter followers to uh, tweet us their questions about coronavirus for you. Um, can, I, can I pass some, some of these on to you? Absolutely. Okay. This is from uh, uh, Kalina Haunt. How do we treat clothes when we get home? How long are viruses active on fabrics? Yeah. So there was some interesting stuff, right? It, it, it could be uh, on uh, cardboard for a day or several days if it's, if it's on uh, plastic or metal. But here's the good thing. This virus has a membrane. It has a lipid membrane, and it, it dissolves like that with soap. So just take your clothes off, throw them in the laundry on warm cycle with soap, and that should take care of it. Um, is getting delivery safe during this quarantine? What about drive through food? Yeah. Um, so that, that's one of those things where you don't, want to go the, you don't want to go down the rabbit hole. You're trying as hard as you can, but I think you have to become almost an epidemiologist and think, okay, what's the worst case scenario? The person who delivered the food had virus on their hands and now the virus is on the bag. So what I've been doing in my own apartment is I have the bag left outside the apartment or the home. Um, I take it out of the bag. I take the stuff out of the bag. I put it in the sink. If it's got plastic around it, I, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm gently so, sudsing off, soaping off the, uh, the plastic container. Um, and then, and here's the key thing. I mean, you can decide whether you want to then have, eat it in the plastic or transfer it from the plastic to something else. But the key thing is this, if you wash your hands, and I mean really wash your hands for 20 seconds, uh, and you don't touch your mouth, nose, or eyes before, even if you have virus all over your hands, you're not going to infect yourself. So it doesn't magically get to you. The way we get it is we, our hands touch something that's got virus on it. And then of course, 23 times an hour when they secretly video medical students in Australia, 23 times an hour they touch their face. So we all do that. So the key thing is to wash your hands a lot, uh, um, to uh, sneeze into the crook of your arm or into a tissue, and then the social distancing. So all this stuff that it seems so simple is really important. Okay, that was a question was from the real Alex Q. Um, this is from At Two Shrinks. I was sick way back in January with headache, fever, and dry cough. The flu test was negative. Any chance I had coronavirus back then in January? You bet. And, and this is the question we're all asking ourselves, right? It's cold, flu, and allergy season. We've all had sniffles, a cold, any of these symptoms, right? It's anything from, let's see, no symptoms, asymptomatic, to horrible pneumonia, and you're on the verge of death. So everything in between, a lot of us are wondering if we had. And the way we're going to know that ultimately is this antibody test. So let me quickly just go over it. There's the PCR, which is the test in your nose and your throat. That's to see if you have active virus now. Then there's the blood test. It's a simple blood test. It's like the same type of, of uh, biology and uh, technology for the measles, mumps, and rubella test that a lot of us have each year. You take that very quickly. You can find out whether you have antibodies. The reason why antibodies are so important is they don't tell you if you have the infection. They tell you if you had the infection. And here's what we don't know for sure. If you do have these antibodies, what degree of protection do you have against further and future infection? If it acts like a lot of other viruses have, it should be for a year or two. We're not sure. We're studying that right now. So the answer to his question is, you need to have that antibody test. Yes, absolutely. A lot of us, I believe, no. that it was probably around in January and February. Now, wait a second. Now, if you had it and you have achieved uh, immunity because you had it, if you take your blood and put it in me, am I immune now? No. So you have to either, sorry, Stephen, <laughs> that, that whole uh, vampire thing. Um, you have to either get infected and then develop immunity, if you, assuming you survive, which 80% of people have relatively mild illness, um, or the vaccine, which then makes you have your own immune system. That's active immunity. What's called passive immunity is when you get serum, and they're trying this right now in trials. Somebody has had COVID-19, they recover. They've got a lot of antibodies in their blood. They take something called plasma, which is the, the part without the red, white cells and platelets in it. And then they give it to somebody in a transfusion. They hope that those antibodies will protect them, will, will somehow fight 
the virus. Now, we're not sure that that's going to work. There are clinical trials going on. But yeah, um, sorry about that, Stephen. No, there goes my startup. <laughs> well, doctor, thank you so much for being here. Stay safe. Stay safe yourself, Stephen. Thanks for inviting me. Dr. John LaPook, everybody. We'll be right back with Kate Blanchett.